Hello Mila, hello Jack, hello everybody else who's watching. Welcome to Storytime with Grandad. Today's book is from Willow the Wisp and it is The Bridegroom. Hello, it's me, Willow the Wisp. Did I ever tell you how the beast came to live in Doily Woods? The poor fellow didn't look like the beast then. Oh no, when he first came here, he was a handsome prince. But by some terrible misfortune, the prince bumped into that wicked witch, evil Edna. Turn the page and I'll tell you all about it. It all began early one morning at breakfast time. Arthur the caterpillar had been wandering about the woods looking for something to eat when he discovered a juicy patch of harebells. Now, those harebells tickled Arthur's taste buds no end. Without a second thought, he plucked a few succulent stems and began munching. As Arthur munched, the little harebells began to ring, so that tiny tinkling bell sounds filled the air. Just then, Mavis Cruitt, the fairy, came along. Good morning, Arthur, trilled Mavis. Morning, mumbled Arthur through a mouthful of harebells. The bells went on tinkling. Hark, said Mavis, did you hear that? Woof, said Arthur, shaking his head so the bells tinkled furiously. Bells, said Mavis, listen, there they go again. Arthur finished chewing and swallowed the last mouthful with a gulp. Now, nah, what's all this about bells, he said. Mavis listened again, but all was quiet. She couldn't hear a tinkling bell anywhere. I'm sure those were bells, said Mavis sadly. I heard them so distinctly. Arthur considered this possibility for a moment. Then he declared knowledgeably, You, Mavis Cruitt, have got a bad attack of the dreaded old ringing in the ears. Have I? said Mavis. What's that? Quite simply, said Arthur, those bells you heard were all inside your pretty little head. Brought about by a desire to participate in matrimony, or in other words, to get wed. Married? said Mavis. Gosh! There is only one known cure for this complaint, continued Arthur. A wedding. And for that, we shall need a bridegroom. But I don't know any bridegrooms, said Mavis. Arthur looked around and saw Twit, the bird. How about Twit here, said Arthur. He'd make a good bridegroom. Mavis tried hard to imagine Twit in a top hat and wedding outfit. But just as the picture formed itself in her mind's eye, Twit flew off, top hat and all. Hmm, said Arthur. On second thoughts, perhaps not. Once a bird, always a bird. Arthur, however, was not one to be easily put off. I'll tell you what, said Arthur, flinging his arms out in a gesture of complete self-confidence. We just wait for the next boat to come along. You give him a wave of the old magic wand and abracadabra, one bridegroom. Now. It so happened that Mr. Abracadabra, from the Department of Magic and Spells, was passing by and overheard Arthur. Did you call my name? he said. There you are, Maeve, said Arthur. First customer already. It was clear, however, that Mavis wasn't too keen. He's not quite what I had in mind, she whispered. What I'd really like is a handsome prince to ride into Doily Woods and whisk me away. Well, by a fantastic coincidence, who should come cycling into the woods at that very moment but Prince Humbert the Handsome? Prince Humbert the Handsome had come from his palace, which was situated in the kingdom not far from Doily Woods. It was a very grand palace, I can tell you, with ivory towers and beautiful gardens. The prince lived there with his mummy, the queen, and his daddy, the king. But at that precise moment, the prince was pedalling along, singing to himself, 
when Mavis Cruet saw him. Cooey, called Mavis, over here. Oh, yes, said Arthur, admiring the prince. He'll do nicely. Wave the old wand, Maeve, and turn him into a bridegroom. Well, everything would have turned out all right if it hadn't been for an unfortunate little mishap. Prince Humbert the Handsome was busy waving to Mavis and not looking where he was going. When? Crash! The prince ran head first into evil Edna, who was taking an afternoon stroll along the path. He somersaulted right over the handlebars and landed in a tangled heap on top of the witch. Ouch, cried the prince. Now who has left a rotten old television receiver lying around? It's really dangerous. Now, as you may know, Prince Humbert the Handsome had great difficulty in pronouncing his R's. Every time he said a word with R in it, it sounded like a W. You try and say rotten with a W in front of it, and you'll see how it sounds. Well, Evil Edna glared at the prince, and the prince glared back at the ugly image on the television screen. What a rotten program, he said. Evil Edna was hopping mad. She was also a witch of extreme wickedness. I'll rotten program you, she snarled. And Evil Edna leaned forward, crackled her aerials and cast one of the worst spells of her evil career. She changed Prince Humbert the Handsome into the Beast. Meanwhile, Mavis had been searching through her spellbook for a spell that would turn people into bridegrooms. She had just found one and was waving her wand towards the prince when Edna's nasty little spell took effect. Imagine her surprise, therefore, when Mavis found herself waving her wand over the beast instead of Prince Humbert the Handsome. There was a twinkle of stars, and there, standing before them, stood the beast, resplendent in the grey top hat. The poor beast was utterly confused. Why am I wearing a grey topper? asked the beast. Because you are going to be a bridegroom, chuckled Arthur. A bridegroom? sneered Edna. Well, who's the blushing bride, eh? None other than the very lovely Miss Pruitt, said Arthur. Mavis, however, didn't look too pleased. No, 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 she cried. I could never marry him. Why not, said Arthur. I know he's no oil painting, but it's an honest face. The beast smiled. He wasn't bad looking, really. It's not his looks, Arthur, said Mavis. It's just, I could never marry a beast who could not pronounce his R's. Oh, really, said the beast. Fairies are ridiculous creatures. The end. Goodbye, Mila. Goodbye, Jack. I'll see you soon. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.